Hallelujah. And so, as we know that today is a resurrection, amen, we commemorate the day of resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, this morning, I'm going to, amen, minister on following Jesus. Hallelujah. And so, Mark 8, 34 through 36. I want to give you an illustration this morning that uh, actually I was reading and just uh, found it a very a deep illustration of what our life is, amen, without Christ. So it's portrayed in this man that he had everything, amen, a man could ask for, but he didn't have a relationship with Jesus Christ. So following Jesus Christ, amen. And this man's name is Ellie Black. And so he was a brilliant businessman, best known for two events in his life. He masterminded, amen, a multi-million dollar takeover of the United Fruit Conglomerate. And secondly, he jumped to his death from the 42nd floor of the Pan Am building in New York City. He was successful. Amen. A businessman. So in the book, an American company, an executive describes a business launch he had with this man, Ellie Black. When the waitress brought a plate of cheese and crackers as an appetizer, Black reached out and took them, placed them on a table, blocked them with his arm, and continued on talking. And so the executive hadn't eaten for hours and hinted that he would like a cracker, but Black acted as though he did not hear him and went on with his business meeting. After a while, Black placed a cracker of cheese on the tip of his finger and continued to talk. And so several moments later, Black placed a cracker on the executive's plate and then blocked it, amen, blocked the rest as before. It was clear that Black was in charge, manipulating others as he pleased. And so when you play follow the leader, check to see who you're, you're following. Amen. Eli Black, with all of his power, ended up in suicide. Jesus Christ, on the other hand, in all his humility, ended up to being the savior of the world. Think about this, how futile life is without Jesus Christ. Um, the writer of Ecclesiastes puts it like this, that life is meaningless. And so, amen, life, amen, purpose, amen, is found, amen, in walking with Jesus Christ. So in the, in the Gospels, amen, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, Jesus commanded his followers Amen. People to follow him repeatedly. In many cases, Jesus was calling the 12 men who had become his disciple. But in other times, he was speaking to anyone who wanted, amen, what he had to offer. And so what Jesus wanted to offer, amen, everyone was everlasting life. Mark 8, 34 through 36 says this. Calling the crowds along with his disciples... He said to them, if anyone wants to follow after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. For whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life because of me and the gospel will save it. For what does it benefit someone to gain the whole world, yet lose his life? Think about this man that I just read about. He seemed to have everything in the world, but in the end, he lost his life. And thus, amen, like King Solomon said, everything in this world is like chasing the wind. Because the thing is that you chase things, but you never catch them. Let's pray this morning. God, we pray this morning that we would, Lord God, know the weights, Lord God, uh, of your son, Lord God, dying upon the cross for our sins, Lord God, that we would follow you all the days of our lives, Lord God, for you have redeemed us 
through your son, Jesus, Lord God. We honor you, Lord God. We honor your son this morning, Lord God. We live all of our days, Lord God, to live to please you, my God, for you have redeemed us through the precious blood of your son, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, for this sacrifice of your son. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And so Matthew 10, 34 through 39, Jesus stated clearly what it means to follow him. He says, do not assume that I came to bring peace on earth. I did not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I came to turn a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. A man's a man enemy will be a man, the members of his household. And so the one who loves a father and mother more than me is not worthy of me. He goes on to say, the, the one who loves a son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whosoever does not take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Anyone who finds his life will lose it. And anyone who loses his life because of me will find it. And so Jesus bringing his sword and turning family members against each other can seem a little bit harsh. After words like whoever believes on him shall not perish. But Jesus never softened the truth. And the truth is that following him leads to difficult choices. How many of us know that following Jesus, we have to come to the conclusion, are we going to follow Jesus or are we going to follow other things in this life? Sometimes turning back, amen, seems very appealing. When Jesus teaches, amen, teachings went from the be attitudes to the coming of the cross. Many who followed him turned away. Even the disciples decided that following Jesus was too difficult. That night he was arrested. Think about that. Everybody turned from him. Every one of them deserted Jesus Christ. On that night, following Jesus Christ meant possible arrest or ex execution. Who wants to die? Nobody. Amen. Who wants to be arrested? Nobody. So rather than risk their own life, or risk his own life, Peter denied that he knew Jesus three times. So truly following Jesus means he has become everything to us. Everyone that follows, every, everybody follows something. They either follow a friend, they follow popular culture, they follow family, they follow selfish desires, or they follow God. And so you and I can only follow one thing at one time. God states we are to have no other gods before him. And so to truly follow Christ, amen, means that we do not follow anything else. Jesus said in Luke 9, whoever wants to be my disciple must deny himself, take up his cross daily and follow me. And so there's nothing as a halfway Christian's. And so as the disciples demonstrated that no one can follow Christ by their strength or by his own willpower. You can't follow Christ, amen, by your own mind power. I've tried it. The Pharisees were good examples of those who were trying to obey God's law in their own strength. And so their self-effort led only to arrogance and distortion of the whole purpose of God's law. And so what's the purpose of God's law? One, amen, the purpose of God's law is to make us conscious of sin. How many of us know that nobody can live up to the Ten Commandments? And so the law was placed there to reveal our hearts to us. That we need, amen, a daily relationship with God. That we need, amen, God to expose, amen, our frail, frailties and our sin in our lives. There's nobody here, amen, that can be called the son of God. We all have sin, amen, and God exposes that sin, amen, through the power of his word. And so the law is like a mirror to show us, amen, of our, our, our behavior, if it's looking like God or not. 
And so without a mirror, you often won't know what you really look like. And so without the law, we often do not know if we are pleasing or displeasing God or disobeying him. And so that's what the purpose of the law was. The purpose of God's law is to testify to the righteousness that comes through faith also. So how does God's law point us to righteousness of God that comes through faith in Jesus? And so one way this accomplishes this purpose is that the obedience is the product byproduct of faith. Therefore, when God's law calls us to be obedient, it is really calling us to have faith in God. Because we don't obey God through our own, amen, merits. Through our own abilities, abilities just simply through faith, amen. That through God's word, God is able to accomplish what he says in our lives. Thirdly, the purpose of God's law is to help us reflect God's image. How many of us, amen, have tried to love their neighbor? Or try to love one another. We can't. It's not in our ability. So we are to reflect God's image. And so as we give ourselves. Amen. To, the, to God's law. Out of love. Amen. For Jesus Christ. He's able to transform us. We're able to love others. Amen. Because he first loved you and I. We're able, amen, to represent more of Jesus Christ as we follow him. And so when we obey God's law, we glorify him because we are reflect, we're being the reflection of him. Think about this. This is what the moon does. This is why the moon is lit at night because it's a reflection of the sun. And that's what you and I are called to do, be a reflection of our father. And so when we do not obey God, we are not glorifying him. Fourthly, I want to take a look at the purpose of God's law is to be a sign marking those who have faith. And so God didn't save people in the Old Testament through their obedience of the law. Rather, he saved them through their ex faith expressed in their obedience to the law. He saved them. Through, amen, Jesus Christ, looking past their sins towards the future atonement achieved in the Son, Jesus Christ. If you, if you read from the beginning to the end of the Bible, you see, G, you see the reflection of Jesus Christ from the beginning to all the way to the end. And so Jesus gave his disciples a secret to faithfully following him. But I want to say that they did not recognize it at the time. He says, the spirit gives life, the flesh, amen, counts for nothing. And this is why I told you that no one can come to me unless the father enables them or the father draws them. And so the disciples had walked with Jesus for three years, learning, observing, participating in his miracles, that yet they could not follow him faithfully. Faithfully on their own strength. And so they needed a helper. And God knew this. Amen. So that's why he gave us his Holy Spirit. So Jesus promised many times that once he had ascended to the Father, he would send a helper. To them, the Holy Spirit. In fact, he told them that it was for their good that he was going away so that the Holy Spirit could come. And so the Holy Spirit indwells in the heart of every believer. And so Jesus warned his followers that they were not to be testifying of him until they were clothed, amen, with power from above. And so when the Holy Spirit came upon those first believers at Pentecost, suddenly they had, amen, all the power they needed to follow Christ, even unto death if they needed. And many of them did, amen. They followed Jesus Christ. In the same faith that Jesus Christ had. And so following Jesus Christ means to strive to be like him. And so he always obeyed the Father. So that's what we need to strive for, amen. To truly follow Christ means to make him the boss. 
And so that's what it means, amen, to make Jesus the Lord of our lives. Who's the boss, amen, of your life? Who calls the shots in your life? Does the word of God, amen, call the shots in your life? Or do you, or do other things, amen, in your life dictate the way you walk? And so every decision and dream is filtered through his word with the goal of glorifying him in everything. And so we are not saved by the things that we do for Christ, but by what he has done for us. And so because of his grace, we want to please him in everything. And so all this accomplished as we allow, amen, the Holy Spirit to have complete control in every area of our life. He explains this in the scripture. I'm not going to read the whole, it's, it's just part of the scripture. In 1 Corinthians 2.14, he empowers us with spiritual gifts. 1 Corinthians 12, 4, 4, 11. He comforts us, John 14, 16, and guides us. John 14, 26 says, To follow Christ means we apply the truth we learn from his word, amen, and live as Jesus walked beside us in person. This is what the Holy Spirit, amen, enabled amen us to do is to walk with jesus christ and i want to say this morning that you can walk with jesus today by the power of god's word and by the power of god's spirit god has provided everything we need to serve him effectively through his son jesus christ amen and so there's no excuse amen for serving Jesus, for not serving Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I want to take a look at the Last Supper meaning and importance. So the Passover was the most sacred feast of the Jews. Amen. Religiously, every year. And so they commemorated the plague on Egypt when the firstborn of Egypt died and the Israelites were spared because of the blood of the Lamb that was sprinkled on the doorpost. And so the blood of the lamb, sorry, the blood, amen, sorry, the lamb was then roasted and eaten with unleavened bread. And so God's command was that throughout the generations to come, amen, the feast would be celebrated. So during the Last Supper, a Passover celebration, Jesus took a loaf of bread and gave thanks to the, to the Father. And so as he broke the bread, he gave it to the disciples. He said, this is my blood that I have given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after the supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant of my blood, which is poured out for you. And so he concluded, they sang a song. And after this, Jesus Christ, he went to the cross for you and I. Paul wrote this concerning the Lord's Supper in 1 Corinthians eleven twenty three to 29. It says, Therefore, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. And so man ought to examine in himself before he eats, amen, of the bread and drinks of the cup. For anyone who eats and drinks without recognizing the body of the Lord eats, amen, and drinks judgment upon himself. And so we may ask, amen, what does it mean to partake of the, blood, of the bread and the cup and be unworthy? It means to disregard, amen, the true meaning of the bread and the cup and forget, amen, the meaning of Amen. Why Jesus Christ, amen, came to die and he paid for our salvation. How many of us know that there's people that are not honoring God by the way that they're lead, they, they live? Or it may mean to allow the ceremony to become, amen, a dead, informal ritual. Amen. The Lord's Supper, amen, to come before him with unconfessed sin. 
And so in keeping with this, Paul instructions, amen, we should examine ourselves before eating the bread and drinking the cup. Hebrews 10, 29 through 30 puts it like this. How much, more, uh, how much worse punishment do you think one will de uh, deserve who has trampled on the Son of God, amen, who has regarded as profane the blood of the covenant by which he was sacrificed, and who has insulted the Spirit of grace? For we know the one who has said, Vengeance belongs to me, I will repay, and again the Lord will judge his people. Hallelujah. And so this scripture this morning is also talking about profaning the blood of Jesus Christ. Yes, amen, we're, we, we're redeemed, amen, by the blood. We, we live, amen, by faith. God has grace towards us. But people can trample the blood of Jesus Christ, amen, by living any way that they want to. Not being pleasing to God. And so that's what the scripture is saying this morning, amen, that we have to be pleasing to the Lord. Hallelujah. And so when we take communion, we are remembering Jesus' sacrifice on the cross. The bread, the wine are tangible, visible reminders of Christ's love for you and I. Rather than simply saying, remember, Jesus gave us a reminder just as we would depend on food and drink to live physically, we can only live spiritually through Jesus Christ. So what this means is that we need to depend, amen. Like the physical food that you and I need eat each and every day, we need to depend, amen, on Christ, on his word for our spiritual nourishment. Communion is a time, amen, of just that. Communion, amen, is a chance to bring ourselves before the Lord and partake in the life he has given us through the death and resurrection of his son. Amen. Can I have every head bowed and every eye closed this morning?